All right, I've already prayed for the message. Everybody doing good? Going to kind of go slow. I'd like to pray with you all at the end of the service. Um, I got some stuff on my heart to pray, pray for, so we'll just see how that goes. What time is it? 11.16? So I have until noon, right? I'd like to finish a little early. And I may have you come back up and do a song. Uh, we'll just see how it goes. I got a lot to... I've been cat-sitting all week long. And um, at my daughter's, do you guys see the pictures of my daughter? She got married. Isn't that awesome? That's just, she's 40 years old. You know, she's never been married, but this is uh, her first and only marriage. So her and her husband are in uh, Greece. They went to Crete. Now they're in Athens. It was just, that also was such a blessing to Pam and I, wasn't it, babe? To have our daughter get married and they're excited. And so I've been, but I've been cat sitting all week. But because I've been cat-sitting, I've been in the Word, you know. I don't have anything else to do. I, I got to defend myself against one of those cats. He'll come. <laughs> I, I'm not even kidding. Like, that cat comes up to me. I won't say what it reminds me of, but that cat comes up to me and rubs up against me and then takes my hand and purrs up against me. Then I, I pet him. He goes, ah, and he swipes at me. You ever seen a cat like that? Then he wants to bite me. He came last night and jumped on the bed and was laying with me, and I'm like, want to pet him but um i don't know i think this cat has a problem with the dual nature he's the other version of roman 7 jeff the one i don't believe in that cat walks in it the good that he would he doesn't do he wants me to love him but he also wants to bite me <laughs> oh, that'd be wonderful that'd be wonderful so yeah we're just real excited about it. so i've been i've been cat sitting and i've been in the word and I have so much. The other day, it was like, ah, oh, man, just like, and I've asked you this before, but anybody ever have God just drop stuff on you? I know, Evelyn, you all the time. I just, so much, and, and I, it's, it, what's weird about revelation, when you say, like, God gave me a revelation, people would get nervous, like, no, I'm not Joseph Smith. He didn't give me a new revelation. He just, what, when I say a revelation, God will take something you already know, and it just seems like, I don't know how to say it. It just kind of goes deeper. It becomes more meaningful to you. It, it, it's easier to apply in your life. You can believe something in a mental ascent type of way, like there's all kinds of things. You can, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory, and then you lose your job, and all of a sudden you don't really believe it. You know what I mean? You start worrying and fretting, and you're nervous, and because you had a mental belief that it was true, but you've never really internalized the word. You've never taken it into your heart and believed it. And we have opportunities all the time. I think a lot of life is an opportunity to learn to trust and believe God. Right? You get all the time, and we, we make decisions all the time, whether we're going to believe God, trust him, or we're going to kind of go our own way. And I, I like to say it's not always heaven and hell. It's just about life. What type of... Didn't Jesus say, I came to give you life? That's Zoe life. That's eternal life. It, it's, God, it's the God kind of life, honestly. I came to give you the God kind of life, Zoe life, and I came to give it to you in abundance. When we live out of that abundant life, then abundant fruit uh, manifests in our lives. And we've taught a lot about that always gets challenged and tested in our lives. But if we hold fast to the word, fruit will be produced in our lives. And I know, Pam and I know, like, everything gets tested, right? You guys know that. You step out a little bit, and what you're believing God for always gets tested. We got to know as a church and as a, a people that negative things and bad things do happen to you in life. Can anybody disagree with that? Right? But how we handle them is so, so important. And there is a way to handle life when life comes at you um, if we stand fast in the lord things will turn out god's way and one of the anchors and I, i'm going to ease into my message here one of the anchors in our life is putting god first i would say in fact that's the bedrock like of everything we could disagree on, you know, and I don't care if people disagree with me on certain things. I don't care. I, I can't convince you. I, I preach the word and I, I study the word and I don't say I know everything. Perhaps there's even things I have questions about. And, and, uh, but um, one thing we think we can all agree on is that Jesus has to be first. 
right? You're here to glorify God, right? That's the purpose of your life. We are all here. Remember in Kenna, I'll never forget your message uh, about the original glory, right? That man was created with glory and to reflect God perfectly. Guys, there are seats. We saved them for you. We got your name. Come on, Maria. We got your seats. Right. Good to see you. Welcome in. Hayden, did, did you guys win last night? Okay. Okay. Sorry to hear that. We got enough seats for everybody. We're good. Hey, life group Thursday night at our house. Hey, 7 o'clock. Since you're late, you got to be there now. 7 o'clock Thursday. <laughs> Bring something to eat, too. <laughs> but if we understand that the original intention of, of God is for man to glorify God, right? When you glorify God, you're going to, your life is going to have meaning and purpose. It's going to be filled with all type of great stuff, all type of fruit. Yes, you'll get challenged. Yes, you'll have temptations. Yes, you'll have obstacles. But if you are fulfilling your purpose in life, Jesus has promised you, you'll have an abundant life. Someone say amen. amen. He promised it. And uh, the devil, or life, or this age, wants to rob you of that original glory, of shining for Jesus. I don't think anybody ever died and regretted one thing they did for the Lord. Do you think they did? What do you think happens when you die and all of a sudden, boom, all the, you just see reality? What do you think happens? Think of, oh man, why didn't I, you know, you probably have, and the Lord's going to wipe away every tear from our eye, but I am sure you're going to, if anything, wish you had done more or reflected God in a greater way. Someone say amen. So that's what it's about. If we keep that at the center, then all the other stuff will flow out of it. And that's the word I preached it many times, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. All the value, all the worth, all the dignity, all the meaning, all the purpose, all the, everything that you need for life and godliness is added into your life when you do that first. It's a priority, right? I do this first, put God first, boom, everything else makes sense. When we don't do that, life becomes a dry and barren journey for the believer right for the believer because you're not living you know on the inside so one of the fundamental things we have to do is renew our mind to God's original glory to God's original purpose for our life so flip over to Romans 12 I'm not going to stay there I really I got this central idea that I have to get across today it just came to me powerfully about the logos so I'm going to read it, and then I'm going to bounce to some other scriptures. i got a lot to say. I urge you, therefore, brothers, sisters. Galatians says, in the kingdom of God, there is no male or female. How many knew that? You're born again. What spirit's in you, Evelyn? The Holy Spirit. What spirit's in you, Chuck? It's the same one. It's the same spirit that's in both of you, right? That's why there's no male. Yeah, obviously, Evelyn, you're a female, and... You're a male, and on this earth, there's male and female. But in the kingdom, there is no male and female because it's the same Jesus that lives in all of us and the same Holy Spirit. Same gifts, right? Jo oh, this is a sidetrack. Joel said that your young men and young ladies would prophesy. Didn't he say that? Did he say that, that women wouldn't prophesy? Did he say they would? Well, that means women can speak. Doesn't that mean that? It's in more than one place. I don't have time to go into the whole doctrine. I'll get <laughs> sidetracked. But yeah, they have the same Holy Spirit. So according to the word of God, they can prophesy. And if you don't believe it, then why did Philip have four daughters that prophesied? Why would that be? So there must, if you don't think so, you must have a misunderstanding somewhere. I don't have time to get into it today. Maybe one day I will. I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world or this world system, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is the will of God, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. For through the grace given to me, I say to you, every man among you, not to think more highly of himself, herself, than she ought to, he ought to, but to think sound judgment as God 
has allotted or given to every man a measure of faith. Now, one translation says the measure of faith. I like that better. I'm reading the New American Standard today. I like the measure of faith better. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we are many and one body in Christ, individually members of one another. Now, I've been reading this for a long time, so you've read it, and that's why I kind of rushed through it. Flip over to John chapter 1. I entitled my message, Renewing Our Mind to the Logos. Just had some powerful insights into that this week. John, in his revelation, said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, who? The Logos. And apart from him, nothing came into being that came into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines out in darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. Verse 14, And the Word, the Logos, became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the one and only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So, in the beginning was the Word. Who, who is the Word? Jesus. That Greek word for word is logos. Logos. It means word, but it has a connotation. This word logos, it means <clears throat> it's the expression or the mind or the communication of the author, right? It's the word. If I, for example, I'll, I'll give you uh, an example. So I thought about this week. Right now, don't look outside. If I said blue sky, what's happened in your mind? You just pictured the blue sky, didn't you, right? It's, you, you, and you got a memory, boom. If I said green grass, right? All of a sudden, there's a word and that word perfectly expresses, right, what you're, so if you, it, it corresponds, it corresponds perfectly to a reality. Understand this. Blue sky. That word itself isn't the blue sky, is it? Is it? No. Blue sky. So I go out and I look and I see her cloud. I look and boom. That word though, Jesus being the word, um, and I could never, I never understood this, Jeff. I said in Hebrews 1, it says Jesus was the express image of God. I said, no, wait a minute. Jesus is God. How many believe Jesus is God? I got my hand up. I do. So I'm like, do you guys ever ask yourself questions when you read the Bible? Do you? When you're like, have you ever asked yourself, what does he mean he's the express image? How can he be the express image? He is God, right? Is he the express image or is he God? You ever ask yourself that question? I ask questions all the time when I read the Bible, and I ask the Lord to explain it to me. You guys do that too, right? Say, God, I don't understand this. Please explain this to me. And so the Bible says Jesus is the express image. In uh, one place, it says he's the icon, and that icon means he's like a photograph. It's like the, the perfect image. It's not that there's, there's no... Dev like if I say blue sky, your image of a blue sky may be cloudy. Pun intended. Oh, that was funny. Anyway, your image of a blue sky might be cloudy, right? But there is a perfect, that was funny, babe. There's a perfect, there's a perfect correspondence to, there is actually a blue sky. So when you say Jesus was the word and the word was God, he is the exact image of the invisible God. Leave your finger, I, I, don't freak out on me, stay with me. I, I'm going somewhere with this. Flip over to Colossians chapter 1. Guys, you've got to do a little thinking today, but it's nothing fancy. But I want you to get this, because in the end, if you get this, it, it, it could really help you understand your relationship to the Word, your relationship to God, and how you're supposed to live out this life with the Lord. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 15, it says, He, Jesus, is the image of of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things were created, both in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, where the thrones or dominions, rulers, authorities, all things have been made by him. They were created for him, 
He is before all things, and in him all things consist. Now, I want to go back to this. He is the image of the invisible God. Please write this down. Write it because you need to go look at it. I can't look up every scripture, can I? We'd be just flipping through our Bibles. So when Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Do you get it? When Jesus was in the water, where was the Father? Well, he was in Jesus, right? But wasn't there a voice coming out of heaven? Wasn't there a spirit coming down out of heaven? But the spirit in Jesus was the same spirit that was in the Father. Same, same. It's God. God in the flesh. So when he says, when you see me, you see the Father. He goes, well, just show us the Father. He goes, how long have I been with you and you don't recognize me? Say, hey, if you don't believe me, just believe my works because the Father's in me and I'm in him. He says something, I do it. And in fact, that very language is really throughout the Bible. So you know, when you see Jesus, now I'm trying to understand this, so you're the express image, and then I got it, like in a flash, I got it, okay? What did the word become? Flesh. What, in 1 John 1, what did they handle? What did they see? What did they hear? The word. They say, but what did they handle? What did, what's the word that John uses? They handled his... Thank you, Pam. They handled his flesh, right? They saw his flesh. So when they were seeing Jesus, the word, they were seeing the meaning, the purpose, the image of God in the flesh. You get it? In the, that's what's different. Behind the flesh, what spirit was in God, was in Jesus? The Holy Spirit, God. So it was God in Christ, it was God in Jesus that was expressing himself through a human body. So now the body is the express exact image, his flesh is the exact image of God. You're looking at it because he's expressing the spirit of God that's in him, who is God himself. Someone say amen. Do you get it? His flesh is the meaning. It's expressing it perfectly. I don't understand God. Look at Jesus. This is going to help us. should help your faith before we're all done today. Because God was in Christ. His flesh became the word. Do you get it? His physical flesh became the word. The communication from God. Everything you see saw Jesus do, that was God doing it. God was in Christ. His flesh was expressing it and manifesting it, so now we know what God looks like. Someone say amen. Because we're seeing, he was the invisible God being revealed in a physical body visibly. That's why Jesus is the mediator between God and men. You're in the flesh, God is the spirit. The chasm between you and God is so great, God is so holy, so perfect, so beyond us, that chasm between God is so great, we had to have somebody take on flesh as a mediator between God and man and bridge that gap. Jesus is God in the flesh, bridging the gap between God and man. Isn't that powerful? There is no other belief system. There is no other faith. There is nothing like it in this world than the gospel of Jesus Christ. God in the flesh. It was really God, but he was expressing himself through Jesus' flesh. It's pretty good. Chew on it. It's pretty good. It blew, I was sitting there, oh, I get it. That's why Jesus is the express image. It's his flesh, Jeff. God's inside of him. Perfect, holy, the substance. God in Jesus, Colossians 2, Jeff, study it later. He's the body. In Jesus, God is the substance of the body that's casting the shadow. Jesus, through Jesus Christ, you're seeing God in Jesus. So powerful. Well, what would God do in this situation? Look at Jesus. How does God, what does God think about people? Look at Jesus. He's the word made flesh. His flesh is meat indeed. His flesh is meat indeed. It's the literal 
substance of God being manifested without filter, without sin, without disobedience. Bo, you keep talking about your shortcomings. If you keep doing it, I'm going to believe you, Bo. But you're, you're, you also, in, in, a, in a small Christian, small C way, Christian means little Christ. How many knew that? Christian means little Christ. How many knew that? It's the same spirit, but you're a little Christ because you guys filter, you don't filter God perfectly like Jesus did. Well, in fact, Jesus didn't filter God at all. God was expressed. The spirit was poured. This will make sense to a lot of scriptures. The spirit was poured out on Jesus without limit. You're limited. You're limited. Now, I don't have time. I'll get off. It's maybe coming up in future weeks. All of us together do a much better job of expressing God, right? Pam's beauty and kindness, Sandy's bulldog tenacity, Evelyn's uh, desire to teach and dig into the word. You know, everybody's got these different gifts, right? Ken's zealousness and eagerness, Charlie's authority and bold. All of us t together do a better job of expressing Jesus because we can't all just carry all of God like Jesus could. He doles it out in the body. Amen? amen. Someone say amen. amen. It's powerful. So the meaning, the communication of God, the logos, was revealed to us in the person and body of Jesus being powered by the Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but that blew me away, and I finally understood how Jesus was the express image. What do you mean? I, th you never thought about that? Like, how can he be the image and be, the, and be God? You never, no one ever thought about that? I, I did all the time. What do you mean he's an icon? He's, more than, he's God. How can he be an image? He is the thing. And it blew my way when the Lord showed me that. So now when we see Jesus... We're seeing this perfect reflection of God. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn this to us now. And this is nothing new. I've said all these things before. So what was the purpose of Jesus then? This word made flesh. Said we beheld him. We looked at his glory. We saw him. We actually saw God. Like in the flesh. That's God. Right here being manifested to me. I can't see the spirit, but I see Jesus, and he's good, powerful. He's healing everybody. Uh, Acts 2, 10, 38, everywhere God went, Jesus, everywhere he went, the Logos, he was doing good. So this God that's doing bad, yeah, I, mean, well, I ain't got time to get into it. Everywhere he went, he was doing good. He was healing all that were oppressed by the devil, right? Because the law came through Moses, and that brought wrath, but grace and truth came through Jesus. We really do live in the age of grace. <clears throat> and I got some revelation and teaching about God's holiness in the Old Testament. I can't give it today, okay? But, uh, man, the Lord was just showing me this. What was in the Ark of the Covenant, guys? <clears throat> okay, good, that's true. The Ten Commandments, that's the law. It's kind of dead, just laying there. What else was in the Ten Command uh, the, the Ark? Huh? The manna was in there, good, <clears throat> that's good. In, in the ark, that's good. Thank you, Ken. Yeah, you guys are right. All that, all that stuff, I don't know what's all in there physically. God was in there. <laughs> God, what, that's crazy. That was probably Christ in there, because he's the epiphany of God, even in the old, the angel of the Lord. Don't have time to go into it. You got to study the Bible. The angel of the Lord was Christ. It's probably Christ in that thing. He was the pillar in the cloud. You know that. Leading. You guys know that, right? That was Jesus. First Corinthians 10. Jesus was that pillar. Okay, so when that guy, Uzzah, there's the ark. They're going into Jerusalem. That guy, Uzzah, the ark shifts, and Uzzah reaches up and touches that ark. What happened? How long did it take him to die? Why did he die? Well, of course, it was against the instructions. They did things that broke the law, right, all the time. God's presence was literally in that ark, and a man of... Do you know flesh is cursed? Did you guys know that? How many knew that flesh is cursed? 
When man sinned, his flesh got cursed. Here's a guy that's living totally in the flesh. He's unholy before God. You know this is the Gospel 101. Unholy, unrighteous, impure before God. Totally. So this unholy, impure, unrighteous dude accidentally touches the ark. It wasn't God. He don't need no wrath to strike God's holiness. Fried him in a nanosecond. God's holiness fried him in a nanosecond. Maybe a picosecond. If they did picoseconds back then. But you know what, guys? Then why is it that you and I are invited into the Holy of Holies? To, thank you, Sandy. Because of the blood. We have been purified. I got, I'm going to get back to the logos. We have been purified by the blood of Jesus. And I, I, asked, I said, God, if I touched that ark, would I have died? And you, you could go a couple of directions with that. You really could. Well, it's disobedience, whatever. You could go. But I don't think so. Because God would have said, son, push a little harder. It's fallen. I got the same spirit as my father. Now, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe because dis I disobeyed God. But I don't think so, though. Because I got the spirit of God in me. I think if I levied that ark, held it up, God would look at me and say, push a little harder, it's going to fall on you, son. Or he'll say, you can let go, Brad, I got this. I don't need you to hold the ark. Okay, God. Because I'm covered in the blood of Jesus, and the same spirit that's in the ark is in me. Oh, Jesus. The same spirit that's in the ark is in me. Do we believe the Bible? Me and we'd be talking. Lord, I need a new pair of tennis shoes. What's going on? Well, hey, Lord, I'm praying, you know, bless, I'd be talking to the Lord because we're one spirit, right? That's what I've been, now, you, know, you could debate it, but, I, but my point is this, the same spirit, that guy Uzzah, because he was under a curse and all flesh is cursed, whether you believe it or not, we're separate from God, without Christ's blood, we're, we're sinners and we're going to stand before God and answer for our life. I don't want to answer for mine. Do you want to answer for yours? I don't want to answer for mine. I want, I thank God for Jesus. I know you do too, Charlie. We've got a history of sin. So it's the same spirit in us, right? So here's how it works. And uh, Oh, Lord, help me. i got like four scriptures that I've taught a hundred times in here. I'm going to go, but, but I hope you got a little revelation. So get this. What did, what, what did Jesus do? He came. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead. And he sent the, God sent the spirit of his son to indwell us. Jesus now lives in us. And with Jesus in us, God fills us with the Holy Spirit. And I don't know if it's the, probably next week. We're going to do a getting filled with the Holy Spirit service. Amen. Come on. We're going because we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus got filled with the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God was always in him because he was God. He got filled with the Holy Spirit when he was 30 years old, give or take, right? Uh, you can be born again. Spirit of God leaks. You got to get filled and refilled and filled and refilled. Ain't one time little one dabble do you. You know that already. You already know that. You get filled and refilled. Okay. So the same spirit that was in Jesus, right? Get this. Is in you now. Because God sent the spirit of his son to indwell you. And fill with his son. You're a new wineskin. And he can put that new wine in you of the Holy Spirit. You got a new wineskin. Spirit of Christ is in you. Now you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. It ain't a different spirit than Jesus was filled with. You know that. It's true. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead. And that's why we can lay hands on the sick and they recover. Oh, I, okay, I got, I got to say this now or I won't say it. Religion always wants to point you to the past. Always. Look what God did. I know God spoke through Moses, but Jesus, we don't know about you. I know God used William Branham, but Brad, I don't know if God's going to use you. I know God used this person, but I don't know if he's going to use you. Religion always points to the past, or it always looks to the future. Never, never now. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride with religion. One day, someday, 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 or it used to be. That's religion. Now, I, don't, I understand there is a future there's last day's prophecy. It's good stuff. We need to learn about it. The Spirit will show us things to come. But I'm talking about all your hope is always in religion pointed off to the future. Jesus lives in me now. 
and he wants to do something in me now. And I'm tired of holding him back. Come on. Aren't you tired of it? Oh, Jesus. So now, Christian, little Christ, Paul said, you are, Dana, a living letter of God. That letter is made up of words. The word is in you now. You become, I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you so you don't stone me, throw stones at me. You become, when people see you, what are they going to say? When people see you, what are they going to say? He's just like Jesus. You're not the Logos capital, but the Logos lives in you. You're an epistle written by who? Written by who? God. I'll put my laws in their heart. I'm sorry, Carter Anthony. I'm sorry, buddy. You're an epistle written by God. God's writing stuff in you all the time. He's putting his finger and he's writing stuff in you all the time. Just writing. Putting stuff in your heart. He wants you to rep, rep, represent or represent Jesus on the earth. Whatever your portion is, whatever your destiny is, whatever God's put in you, he wants you now to look, sound, and smell like Jesus, the Word. You actually become, and I don't mean Logos, capital L, like you become the Logos. I don't mean capital L, like Jesus. You become the living letter. In fact, you might like that better. You're not God, you're not Jesus. He lives in you. And now when people see you, they should be seeing a hint of Jesus. Now I'm going to show you this quickly because we're going to run out of time. Flip over to Colossians. I've been through all these before. I actually have another three hours to preach, but I'm going to condense it all into 10 minutes. Oh, you don't know. I could have went off on 10 tangents. Jeff, I'm doing my best. <laughs> Jeff helps me to stay focused. Colossians 3.10. We're going to go to four scriptures quickly. I want you to see, because you need to see this, what God's doing. That's why complaining is ridiculous. That's why worrying and fretting is ridiculous. That's why division and uh, unforgiveness, it's ridiculous because Jesus lives in you now. Everything's going to be okay. Doesn't matter what happens. I mean, those people were lined up and crucified on the Alpian Way. They had hundreds of them lined up and crucified. And history tells us they were singing. They made lights out of them in the gardens, Nero's gardens, and they lit them up on fire, and they were singing. I think they knew something we don't know. Don't you think they knew something we don't know? Paul was beaten. Stone, left for dead. He got up singing and shouting. They were in prison stocks. They were singing and shouting. shouting. Someone sits in your pew or sits, parks in your parking spot. I just can't believe life is so hard. Someone says something bad about you, and it hurts. It hurts. Get over it. God's in you. Forgive them. God's in you. Jesus forgave. You're, the, you're a living letter. You're representing Jesus to people. If they, if they see Christ in you, they'll get saved. When you forgive the unforgivable, they'll get saved. Right? When you love the unlovable... When you allow Jesus loose in your life, and whatever God's doing in your life, we all are representing Jesus in our own way through the Spirit. Okay, it says in Colossians 3.10, and have put, help me stay focused, Jeff, and have put on the new man who is being, what's that word there? Renewed. What, renew your mind, doesn't it say that? Renewed. Renewed to the true knowledge of, According to what? The image, the icon, the picture of the one who created him. We're being renewed in the true knowledge according to the image of Jesus. Okay? Doesn't it say that? Someone say amen. This is our purpose, guys. This is your purpose, to be renewed in the image of Jesus. It's not just to get a new car and a new house and... You know, all the, it's, it's to look like Jesus. I think God wants you to have a house too. 
Okay, so uh, 2 Corinthians 3.18 Boy, there's just so much here. Now the Lord is 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror. What are they looking at? A mirror. A glass. They're looking at a mirror. And what are they seeing? The glory of the Lord. Amen. What are they looking at? A mirror. And what are they seeing? They're looking at a mirror and they're seeing the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Are being transformed into the same what? Read it. Please read it because you've got to know this. I'm not making this up. This isn't some wild heresy. I'm going to read four scriptures. They're being transformed into the same what? Image. From what? By who? By the Spirit. We live in a new covenant. We're being transformed by the Spirit, not the law, by the Spirit of God, into this image that we're looking at. Flip over to uh, Romans 8, 29. I have to go quick. I'm giving you these scriptures because out of the mouth are two or three witnesses. Every word should be established. There's actually more. I'm going to read it quick. For whom God foreknew, you, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of who? That he might be the firstborn among who? Many brothers telling you Jesus is your brother. You're the next one and the next and the next. Tells you Jesus, he's more than just your brother. He's the Lord. But that tells you who you are. You're being renewed in his image. So why would it be crazy if you laid hands on a sick person and believed God would heal him? Why would that be so crazy? Oh, we'll get to that. We're, we're, we're moving that direction. Last one of this batch is Ephesians chapter 4. You guys okay? Yeah. Is, 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 does, does it seem like I love you guys or does it seem like I'm, I'm mad? I want to know. Am I coming off okay? I'm not mad. If I'm mad at anybody, it's the devil. I love you guys. When I see you, my heart lights up. When I don't see you, my heart's sad. It is. Oh, Gianna wasn't at church today, Lord. I wonder how she's doing. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 13. I've, I've read all these scriptures before. Until we all attain the unity of the faith. Unity is so important, people. The devil fights it tooth and nail. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. The knowledge of who? The Son of God. To a mature man, to the measure of the stature which belongs to the fullness of Christ. As a result, we will no longer be children, tossed to and fro by the waves, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, by the craftiness and deceitful scheming. They want this, they want that. But speaking the truth in love... We are to grow up in all aspects into him. Who's him? Who is the head, even Christ? Who are we growing up into? Christ Jesus. Jesus, the Lord. Last scripture. This is the goal. And I see, I believe that this is where the healing comes from. This is where the provision of God comes. Even when there's bad days and tough days, this is where the ability to withstand the test and the trial comes from. It's when you're rooted and grounded of who you really are. If we're living for the day, if we're living for the temporary, we'll fold every time. But if we know what God's up to in Christ and who we really are, we, we will be anchored on God. Won't we? That's why, that's why that's all Paul taught. I really believe that's why Paul never taught much about healing, didn't say, because he knew if you got this, you get the whole thing. Jesus taught a lot about and everything, but Paul was saying, get this, if you understand that Christ lives in you, it's the ultimate game changer. So uh, John chapter 16, verses 13 uh, through 15, and Jeff, when I'm done, grab my Bible from me. Take my Bible. You have my permission. All right. Well, we'll go verse 12. Jesus said, I have many more things to say to you, but you, you're not going to understand them. You, you, you can't bear what I'm going to tell you. That's what he said. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, by the way, that truth, the spirit of truth, is the actual reality, the spirit of truth, right? It's the substance, and the God, when you speak in the truth, you're bearing witness to the reality. If you're lying, you're not bearing witness to the truth, you're bearing witness to a lie, 
You're not speaking the truth. Truth is real. There is real truth, right? Everything isn't subjective. There is absolutely truth out there, right? Like either sleeping with a married woman's wrong or it's not. There is truth. It's wrong. Come on. There's absolute truth. Thank God for grace. Okay. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will reveal or disclose to you what is to come. He shall glorify me. Get this. He shall take of mine and shall reveal it or disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore I said, he will take of mine and disclose it to you. Think about it. You guys can't understand you're still flesh. You're still flesh. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you yet. So you're not going to understand this. Jesus said to him, he said, but when the Holy Spirit comes, he is going to take everything of mine and he's going to reveal it to you. Oh, and by the way, everything that belongs to God is mine. Everything's mine. And he's going to reveal it to you. Everything's mine. Paul says the same thing. All things are yours. Doesn't he say that? All things are yours. Jesus said the same thing. So all this, all this reality comes when we realize that the Spirit of God, the reality of God, the truth of God, the reality is inside of us, guys. The Spirit of God, the kingdom of God is within you. The Holy Spirit and that invisible God is revealing as we pray in the Spirit, as we search the Scriptures, as we look at Jesus. When we look at Jesus, the Spirit of God is revealing to us who God is, and we're being renewed according to that image, and our lives should be changing. Isn't that exciting? Jeff, Jeff, your prophecy about being a son of God, isn't that powerful? We're the sons of God. That Galatians says he's not withholding anything from us. Isn't that powerful? Read it. There it is. Bingo. And that's my last scripture. Your scripture is the amen on it. Because you are his child, everything he has belongs to you. And I really do believe a lot of times in the church, we emphasize the, the blessings and the things out here. We're always chasing blessings, which I want you to be blessed. And I believe God wants you to be blessed. You can make a case for it. But here's the thing. This is the real blessing. Because if you know who's inside of you, if you know who you are, you're going to be looking to bless somebody else. <laughs> and the kingdom of God's going to come to you like a river flowing through you because God's going to be blessing you and pouring out his spirit on you because you're a channel, you're a vehicle, you're seeking first the kingdom. When we understand, and I guess I don't understand it all, you know, I'm like you, but I'm digging, I'm digging. And, and what the Lord's showing me, if I have Jesus as the image, so I am, Jesus said to his disciples in Matthew 28, 20, he said, go into all the world, and he said, teach them, baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He said, teach them to observe everything I taught you. So when I look at what Jesus taught the early disciples, if I'm going to be an obedient disciples, I've got to do the things that Jesus taught his disciples. That's what he said. Teach them to do everything that I taught you. So I'm, in, I'm learning to do that. I'm learning to do what Jesus did. I'm growing in the knowledge of Jesus. Does that make sense? So we got some growing to do, don't we? What I want to do, and, and I'm going to release and dismiss, because I, I went, anybody surprised it's noon right now? I tried. I tried to get done at a quarter till. I can't cat sit and just not, you know, <laughs> not get this stuff. There, I don't know about you, but the Word of God's so rich, isn't it? Isn't it rich? Like, just, don't you just want to dig into it? That simple reality that Christ is in you is, is the pinnacle of the gospel. That's just, like, overwhelmingly beautiful. And the Holy Spirit comes at it a hundred different ways all the time, trying to show us that. Here's what I wanted to do. Remember uh, two weeks ago when I, I had a word, word for hands? There were like three people that came up to me afterwards. And 
I don't see them here today so I can talk about them, right? <laughs> one, um, one had gashed his thumb with, like wide open to the bone. The other um, had this finger issue going on. And the other person had hands, and they, they felt unworthy. Or it was too inconsequential, God doesn't care. And one person said, well, I haven't really been living right, and I just don't think the Lord would heal me. And maybe another person felt guilty about how their hand got injured, right? And I'm realizing, no, guys, healing and blessing, all these things are God's grace on us. He was trying to show those people, I believe, I was praying about this, he was trying to show that we prayed for, um, how, are your, how are your hands? Are they still good? Yep. You, you got healed. Yes. Amen. Did anybody else get healed? I don't, three of you, uh, anybody else get healed? You got healed? Did you, Sandy? We had three get healed. I really believe in the ones that put their hands up. God, but those three people that felt unworthy, I really believe that God wanted to give them grace on that healing. Why doesn't he just, you know, get Michael out of the chair? Well, if you can get Michael out, get him out. Amen. Someone say amen. Amen? You can get him out. Get him out. Please do. But he was showing gr grace to those people, like, hey, I love you. You're not separated from me. I'm not mad at you. Come back. Come back. I want to give you grace. I know what you did this week. I saw you. I saw you. I know how you did it, and I know what you did, but I love you. I want to heal you. Your sins are forgiven. Come on back. You're not going to do any good staying in condemnation. You're not going to do any good walking away from God and getting angry and so, he, so, so the healing or the gifts of the Holy Spirit that come from Jesus through the Holy Spirit are God's gracelets on you. So if I give a word like that, don't ever um, like, oh, I'm not worthy. Of course you're not worthy. Who is? It's the blood of Jesus that, we're, you know, just tell, well, I'm sorry for my sins. Well, please forgive me and go up and get prayer if you need to. Amen? But God wants to do it. So what I want to do today is I want to pray for sick people. And I'm going to release, as soon as I, you, the ones that want to get prayer, I'll release the church. I don't want to hold you. And I woke up this morning. This is always like a risk, you know. I woke up this morning. Is anybody uh, buying or selling a house? And maybe somebody surely is. But, like, you want to sell a house? Huh? And it's on your mind. Like, okay. Is there any? Good. I got anybody else? You're buying a house. Okay. You're by, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you guys. I woke up. Guys, if you just have a thought, sometimes it's the Lord, sometimes it's not. I literally woke up with that killer cat. I think it just left my lap. I woke up and I saw a perfect image of this beautiful little like cottage house. And that doesn't mean your house looked like that. This perfect image of a cottage house. And uh, I, I had the thought that they were going to buy it, but it could have been buy or sell. But there was snow on the ground. So I'm thinking, I didn't know what that, and guys, I'm telling you, it wasn't like just a dream or my imagination. I'm seeing a house. And at first, I didn't think anything of it. Like, what? And then all of a sudden, I this is too clear. I'm seeing this thing. I'm like, Lord, what is this thing? <clears throat> and it's, it's a house. And I, the thought came to me, someone's buying or selling a house. And I feel like the Lord's saying, that thing is going to, by winter, you're going to have it when the snow falls. Because it had snow on the ground. Isn't that something? So, do you believe it? Okay, when I pray, I want you to come up. I want to agree with you and you. You selling or buying? Both? <laughs> Both. Okay, selling and buying. And you're buying, right? Okay. The Lord's got your house. Okay, and he's got yours. And before, I, I believe by winter, that bad boy's coming, okay? When snow's on the ground, we're believing God. Can we believe God specifically for that? Because there was snow on the ground. It wasn't Florida, brother. It was snow. Get that? Snow. Okay, now is there anybody else here that has something physical in your body that you want prayer for? Okay? I'm going to have you... Um, I want to have you come up, and then I'm going to release. If you, Anybody else? I'd like to get a commitment. Anybody else? I got one, two, three. Evelyn, I would love for you and Pam, Jeff, come up. Charlie, you guys can help me. Guys, if you need prayer for anything like that or have another prayer, come on forward. We're going to pray. Who was healed last week?